hands-on, defibrillation. Continuous, uninterrupted chest compressions result in better patient outcomes. Limiting interruptions in chest compressions is ideal. Continuing to do chest compressions through defibrillation events remains an option. The risks to the provider performing compressions are increasingly clear. There are ways to protect the provider doing chest compressions. We review those protective steps in this video. I want to continue CPR. Hold on. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead and charge. Everybody back away. Back away. Back away. Back up. Okay, go ahead and deliver shock. Back it up here. No, no he's going to do it. Go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. You're out of shock. I felt a small jolt. Nothing major. I got nothing. Looks like that looks like there. defib over there. Or, you want a 360? No. No I'm going to do a hands on here, see what happens on that. Is it a V-fib? Clear. Clear, man. Can I, can I shock with that? Mom? Shock. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I didn't feel anything. Hands on defibrillation. The answer seems pretty simple. The actual number of recorded electrical injuries from defibrillation accidents are very small. While everyone agrees there are theoretical risks of injury related to contact with a patient being defibrillated, it is possible that those fears have been exaggerated by a general lack of knowledge. The serious negative consequences of interruptions in chest compressions during CPR is clear. When the provider wears appropriate protective gear, the benefits of hands-on defibrillation far outweigh the minimal risks of electrical injury during hands-on defibrillation. Discussions of joules, volts, amps, leakage current, voltage drop, ohms, and resistance are not easily translated by clinicians into actual risks. While the literature researching polyethylene, nitrile, LAN latex gloves, double gloving, polyethylene drapes etc. describes various degrees of benefit, definitive answers concerning safety are not yet forthcoming. It appears, however, that none of the articles describing defibrillation simulations testing various PPE materials and multiple trials report anyone being injured. The bottom line is that hands-on defibrillation has the potential to be performed safely if the rescuer uses appropriate electrical insulating barriers. Electrical insulating gloves are the obvious answer. In the end, this is not a complicated problem, but the greater community is still waiting for a solution. Uninterrupted chest compressions save lives and hands-on defibrillation allows continuous chest compressions. While we don't need an electrician to solve this dilemma, we do need their Class 1 electrical insulating gloves which hands down provides the most guaranteed protection. Insulated electrician's gloves can be purchased individually or by the EMS service or hospital and the dilemma will be mostly solved. Disposable electrical insulating gloves are reportedly available on the market.